I've been interested in studying the world around us since I was a little kid. I grew up in a science family. I remember as a kid going down to local salt marshes with my family and identifying species and thinking about the biological and physical processes that controlled why you saw fiddler crabs in the mud, why you saw mussels on the rocky inner tidal. And it was this fascination with how the world works, why the interactions and relationships between humans, animals, plants, the environment creates these amazing systems that are so much more than the sum of their parts. So here at the University of Rhode Island uh, at the Graduate School of Oceanography, uh, my lab is collaborating with several other colleagues to look at how plastics are transported into Narragansett Bay, how they're cycled through the system and the potential impact they have on the food that we eat from the bay and the sort of ecological integrity of the bay. Plastic entering our water treatment system leads to a lot of microplastics. Uh, I mean, that's one particular source. The plastics do break down into smaller pieces of plastic. And so those are an impact that are impacting our fisheries because it's something that through bioaccumulation is being ingested by zooplankton small fish, big fish, and then we're eating the big fish. So, uh, you know, I think that Rhode Island impact right now is somewhere in the moderate category. Uh, I don't think that we have a huge prolific issue on the shoreline, for example, but there are areas that we need to address. It's really the opportunity that the Ocean State has to be a leader in tackling plastic. I think this question of dealing with marine debris and plastic uh, touches on all of our lives from the top of the food chain in terms of government policy all the way down to the things we can do as individuals on a daily basis. We've been doing beach cleanups for over 13 years and we've had our marina trash skimmers in operation in four locations that are highly effective at removing surface debris and litter and plastic. The marina trash skimmer has three doors on either side of it. Um, water fills in through the doors, collecting inside the motor tank, which the motor's exerting 375 gallons a minute. As it's pumping water out, water's refilling through the doors, allowing anything floating on the surface to get collected inside. One of the things we keep telling people is that this is a solvable problem, and it starts with each one of us making better choices on land. And after saying that so many times, and thinking about the choices that we make on land, and then understanding the dire situation of our waste management in the state of Rhode Island with the landfill filling up in about 15 years, what dawned upon us was that behavior, that's really the key of it, it's behavior. And one behavior that we want to try to use as a vehicle for change is if we can get people to start composting their food scraps, it, it, it develops a more personal relationship with your waste footprint and your daily choices every day. Uh, almost 33% of material at a, at a residential level is compostable material. And so if we can pull that out of the landfill, it will reduce the amount of methane gas that's being created in the landfill. It will give the landfill a longer life. But more importantly, from a plastic pollution point of view, is it helps to change the behavior every day with your waste footprint. We gotta go back up here. We're Got some buoys, Kit Kats, nice wheel. This could be treasure, lost boat. But a big part of our beach cleanups, it's not just the pounds and the people and the activity, but it's the data. So with participatory action science, people are getting involved in collecting data. So as the saying goes, passion doesn't influence policy, but data does. So although I might feel strongly about a topic, what I really need to do is to change people's minds is provide factual data. So at all our cleanups, people go out with a tally sheet and they essentially do a marine debris tracking exercise to itemize every item that we found. And in the last six years, we found over 380,000 different pieces of debris and litter on the shorelines. And from there, we can draw the conclusions as how many of them were plastic bags, how many were cigarette butts, how many of them were lobster pots. And with this data, then we can go back to policymakers, whether they agree or disagree upon the severity of the topic, they can't argue with the facts. It's not sufficient to just do our science, write our papers, you know, and talk amongst other scientists. That's not going to actually get anything accomplished. You know, we need to be able to effectively communicate our research to invested stakeholders. So 
We form partnerships with government agencies to help develop uh, rules, regulations, and legislation to help the state of Rhode Island manage plastic use. We talk with local fishermen to help them understand how uh, plastics can impact the food webs that support local fisheries and the safety risks that might be involved in fishing in different locations within the bay. Not all places in the bay have the same exposure to plastics. We talk to the general public when we have the open house here at the Graduate School of Oceanography. We actually have an exhibit all about beach cleanup and we talk about the ways that we as individuals can reduce our plastic use. So we share that public outreach to get people on board, not only so that they can reduce plastic in their household, but they can make informed decisions as they're voting for the people that lead our state to make well-informed, scientifically backed decisions on legislation and rules. It's not just about surfing. It's not just about sailing, it's not just about kiteboarding, but it's simple things like walking by the beach, you know, having that personal human connection between water and mind. So uh, there's a lot of people that enjoy the ocean for a lot of different reasons. And so really all of that energy is what comes together with Clean Ocean Access is to really promote stewardship because we all care about the same thing.